so when any communication which goes out it has to be properly fact checked right from the grassroots level it cannot be like okay some some news has come from somewhere you just pick it up and you start throwing out it cannot happen right so it has to be you know i mean i personally feel that at least from the policy side of it even from you know the news side of it right you have to have proper fact checking from the grassroots level have multiple checks from multiple channels and then put out a communication because one wrong word also can make a huge impact in what you're trying to say it can be taken negatively as well and it can be misinterpreted as well i started as a brand management trainee right and it was a campus placement and uh, you know there was this company called built balatpur industries um, you know a lot of us when we were growing up and we were in college we used to use those black notebooks with that red logo right so that was the company uh, which picked me up and i got into branding for the same category that i used to be like oh this is like a great product so i started my communications journey maybe 2 3 years after my uh, career actually started because uh, coming from the entire uh, you know branding and marketing and traditional marketing in in those days back in 2009 2008 it used to be traditional marketing it used to be atl and btl and things like that right but there were few traces of uh, you know communications into play where an internal communications used to be in the play right where you're talking to your distributors you're sending those mailers and you're sending out communication about a new product coming in then press releases wherein you having certain tie ups so that's how i started and as the world has gone technologically very advanced we have moved to you know such such uh, you know easy but yet complex ways of communicating right so the press releases are now given by ai bots chat bots you just have to feed in couple of data and everything is there where and we used to have specialized people you know and uh, to do all of that work for us so yeah that that that's how i ended up uh, my journey in communications and uh, for last one and a half to two years it has been purely communications and pr so the shift has been great and uh, i i think we are doing a pretty decent job as an organization as well to ensure that the right communication goes out so that's how it has been so like if i say that you know uh, when i started my career i i didn't know what was the importance of roi or what was the importance of crunching data right or how to push a particular category in a particular demographic basis data and uh, you know number of children how to push stationery how to do mind mapping and how to average out distribution channel and you know getting more people on board so it used to be all ground work but that was something that was not uh, you know that was known to me earlier and that is how my journey of understanding data and you know uh, handling uh, clear objectives and identifying relevant data sources all of that came into picture so if i have to say how i started interacting with data early on in my career so this is how it started i will uh, tell you about a camping that i did right that was a digital literacy program and we did it in partnership with meta all right so if i give you a little background how data came into play to understand the need for the campaign to be run so you know there's a lot of uh, lack of awareness among children about uh, cyber abuses right and as on date you will find every single child having a handheld device right so they have access they have exposure but there are a lot of things which come along with it so you say you know rising cyber crimes wherein cyber stalking is happening cyber bullying is happening harassment is happening 
right and relating to child pornography as well then there's phishing ransomware then defamation is there then grooming hacking identity theft i mean you name it and it's happening right and the major thing which is happening is the violation of privacy which is not just limited to children it is also limited to how parents behavior impact so there was this report which was uh, published and it said that 85% of children in india have been cyber bullied in various forms right and we are 7% higher than the global average so this is all data and these are shocking data where you understand that okay there is a need you know there is a need for awareness to be done so we came up with this program wherein we reached to about 35000 students across india and teachers and parents and we educated them about online cyber safety you know keeping themselves safe and it has been very impactful right the responses that we got and the kind of information that we shared you won't believe that while doing this camping we realized that students from standard 8 okay they are on dark net they are using platforms like decode so these kind of things when they you know it's all basis data and you know crunching numbers and reports and you know a lot of uh, things like that have been coming into play and that is where i feel that you know my campaign uh, really made an impact and uh, we are still continuing with a lot of awareness programs basis the data that we receive basis the data which comes out into reports and the crunching that we do right so this is uh, what i have it is primarily uh, what do you call uh, revolving around the numbers that we take okay like for example you starting a project right it's an awareness project so there is a set number of people that we have to reach so we would you know either have tie ups with different different organizations right and then ensure that the project is delivered so the data matrix that you are asking about is more to do with reaching out the number of people that we already have so you will have you know key performance uh, indicators wherein we define ki okay so this was our goal this was our objective right and this is what is relevant to our particular project and then it can keep varying depending on objectives like how many individuals we have served or you know what is the level of awareness what was before so you have questionnaires you have surveys right and then you also get feedback from the organizations that you have partnered with that okay how many people have actually gone back and they have read the policies how, how many clicks have been there and how many people have start, you know the, the, how what is the increase in number of reach outs like for example there is uh, some issue with some post being put up online right and sometimes people don't know what to do about it at least that information is there that awareness is there so we get it in terms of feedback and also the grassroots mobilization that we do that you know measuring at the level of grassroots that what is the number of volunteers those who have come up to you know engage with the campaigns and what is the turnout and uh, you know how many uh, letters or uh, engagements we are getting on social media so things like that uh, are our indicators i would want a ai tool which can measure the real time impact of all my campaigns right and i would uh, prefer if that comes out very soon because you know reaching out to one individual every you know uh, you know now and then it is a tad difficult to kind of come back and say that okay this is the impact we have created so i would prefer that if you know some ai tool comes in where the human sentiment value and the impact of uh, you know these awareness campaigns that we do could uh, come out and i could have those you know like magic wand and <laughs> just be like okay there you go this is this is what we have got by the end of the training session anything which comes in right at any point in time in technology or otherwise it will have few pros and it will have few cons right so the biggest con is that there's a lot of plagiarism <laughs> so if you think that 
you know ai is uh, going to generate everything and you can just publish out no that cannot happen right because it is plagiarized you will find the same thing somewhere else and then it doesn't uh, have any authenticity you know in terms of your uh, work but if i have to see pros then in terms of uh, you know how organization ma- ma- uh, manages their communication strategies or engaging with audience or analyzing data so that is where i feel that ai has uh, been good for pr and uh, communication so even for media monitoring i think ai powered media monitoring tools can actually scan millions of online articles at once and that actually helps in you know those transcripts in real time and it allows the pr professionals to you know track mentions of the brand and industry trends and competitor activities so ai can actually automatically filter and categorize and it can save time in providing you updates and you know do some proactive communication so that is where i feel that you know ai has been uh, really impactful and uh, also you know for those data analysis and insights ai has been really helping in you know uh, measuring the public sentiment and identifying the emerging trends and uh, it kind of helps in tracking the effectiveness of their campaigns as well so these are the places where i feel that uh, ai has been impactful in you know pr and communication first and foremost develop very very strong communication skills right so communication skills doesn't mean that oh you can speak well but it has to be effective communication right that is the foundation of pr and communication and you have to listen you have to listen actively right otherwise you cannot be an amazing storyteller until unless you don't listen your storytelling is not going to be impactful so one is this then you have to hone your uh, writing ability right and stay updated on industry trends build a diverse skill set you need to you know people feel that uh, pr and comms is easy it's not because there's a lot of uh, crisis management disaster management reputation management is involved and you have to have uh, like you have to have a very versatile personality and a very stable head on your neck right only then you could uh, do all of those things and uh, most importantly it is uh, important to build your network and build relationships in the industry because uh, uh, that really helps you in your uh, you know career be it at the start be it at the you know peak of your career in this particular field you really need to have a good network and good uh, build relationships so you can do that by attending industry events uh, you can uh, do that by you know uh, what do you call joining some professional associations right and listen to people when you go to these events and understand different perspectives and then make an assessment in your own mind that okay this is how things are because what happens is that uh, you know i've i've come across so many people those who are wanting to get into this particular field they read a new they read one news article and they become biased right whereas whereas uh, what one should do if you are really looking for a career in this particular field you should read 10 to 12 articles on the same topic and then make your uh, assessment right because one article two articles you end up having a very biased uh, kind of an approach to a particular news and the uh, last and most important like i've said before ethics and integrity right you have to uphold high ethical standards in your work uh, if you want to be a pr and communications professional you have a responsibility to maintain transparency honesty and integrity so this is my advice to anyone who is wanting to get into a field of pr and communications